Hello and welcome to Infinity. This is a comparison of the Luminosity range mask with Affinity Photo 2 onwards to the Luminosity mask that I wrote as a macro for the procedural texture. And it shows one and the other and there's advantages and disadvantages to both. So we we'll start off just to show how it works. We'll start with a straight gradient from just from black to white, which you can create in any document using the gradient tool. OK, so what we're going to do, first of all, is go here to the mask, click on that and then luminosity range mask. And what this does is it controls transparency up and down and applied to luminosity from dark to light across. So that if I pull down this area here and bring this across, it makes this end here, you can see, increasingly transparent. What you often want to do, and this is what my macros were designed to do, is to have a band pass to get a group of, of a certain level of light. So you can do this here with a point here and a point here and bring this down here. This looks rather strange, and this is because there's a bug, and this is the Windows version of this at the moment. It may be fixed later, but I'm going to put on linear, and you can see there that you've got four sections here. You've got, uh, effectively, you've got a gradient up here. You've got it all fully selected here, and a gradient down there, and then nothing down here. So this let, lets us select kind of an area here, and you can see as the, the line here, the slope goes off, then that gradient becomes more uh, gentle as it, it rolls off. OK, so if I delete that and then we'll look at the way that the macro works. And for this, I'm going to need to do window and go to library. And importantly here, you had the hue, saturation and luminosity selection uh, macros that I did before, but you need to redo them so just download them from the same position, which is in the links below the download page. And you can get to the luminosity mask there. And I'll show you why in a moment. So there are a number of different ones here. I'm just going to take the simplest one, first of all, here. Uh, they're mostly the, very similar in idea. And you can see already there's a band pass there. I'm just going to move this across here to give space. So when I open this, and what this has done is taken a copy of the background here, or whatever's underneath it, does a merge visible to do this, and then it adds a procedural texture layer underneath. So if I double click this, this gives me the controls. This is the smaller set. You can also have a much greater uh, number of things that you can adjust with other ones. But we're just looking at this for now. The way this works is it does the same kind of band pass group here. It just takes a set of luminosity levels, but you can also then just slide it forwards and backwards. It makes it easier to select that band. This sets the middle, and the difference is from the previous one is this is M1 here. It was MI for middle, but MI stopped working in version 2 because they reserved it for something else. But that's how it is, but it's now fixed. And I can change the width here like this with this one. And the feathering, I can bring that down and up. So it's quite easy to select. The Mono Protect is a particular for when you're working with colours and you want to, say, exaggerate a colour and the near monos can just turn up in, in all sorts of random colours. So that's to help you to deselect anything in the monochrome region. It's a basically a kind of saturation control. So let's have a look with this here. And we'll go, first of all, do Control-0 so you can see all of it there. And we'll go, first of all, on this one to the mask. So I'm going to go to Mask Layer here and Luminosity Range Mask. And right, let's just make this a little bit smaller and move this across. And if, say, I want to select just the darker areas, this, these trees here, maybe just to lighten them up a little bit. And I'm going to put in here a couple of points, somewhere along here. 
and then bring one end down here. Yep, turn it linear again before it, so it'll work. And bring the other one down here and across here. You can see as I bring this across, I'm selecting a band of luminosity. And I've got this sort of this area here across the trees here. And you've got to kind of fiddle about with it. A way to, to, to start off with this is actually go from either end here with a point in the middle and just move this backwards and forwards. And you'll see roughly where the trees are here. And then you can bring these across and you can put in another point to make it wider. And then you're getting most of what you want here. So and I could even bring this across here, oh, out here a bit, that'll do. Now if I wanted to say, I kind of want to colour this. Now maybe I can do a recolour just to change it to something slightly different. Oh, no, let's just do H HSL. So what I'm going to do now is go to the original background here, put in a HSL on here. Then I'm going to drag the luminosity range mask to the HSL. And then this is just controlling this area. So if we just turn this up and down, you can see it's just that area selected there. And if I do, maybe I'm just going to turn up the saturation a bit to make the darker areas there brighter because it's a very bright picture. And you can see here, I've got a nested layer here. So I've got the HSL in the background as a child and the luminosity range as a child of the HSL there. What I can even do as well, is I can mask here and go to a mask, another mask. I'll put it up there because it wasn't sure where to put it. I can drag that down onto the luminosity mask now, and I can open this up. So I've now got multiple layers of nesting. So the mask is a child of the luminosity mask. So I can now take paint on black on there with a paintbrush and bits down here, which I didn't want to be affected. I can just turn that off. See if I paint it up here, I'd actually reduce that up there as well. So it's a it's a relatively simple thing to use, but selecting ranges is something fiddly, particularly if you want to get a very narrow range and be able to track through the image. So we go to another one here. I'll just reduce this one a bit and put this across here. There we go. Now I go to one of these. So I'm just going to go to the Smart Luminosity selection, which has got more things on it. And it's take, again taken a copy of the background here and it's put a this procedural texture layer there. So I turn off the background and I can see what it's doing there. And I'll bring up the procedural texture here and bring this across here so I can see it. Now I got those ones I was controlling before, but a few more as well. So I'm going to start off, typically what you do is you turn the width and the feathering down and then you can just slide this up and down to see and it's taking a very narrow slice each time of different luminosity. So there seems to be one about there which is picking up the trees. Then I widen out the width to pick up the darker areas of that and then can feather it out so it softens and blends more nicely into the area there. When I got some other things appearing like this, I might be able to get rid of this by changing, for example, the way that luminosity is calculated. So I'll roll that up to a one. There we go. That's knocked that out. So that's helped here. I can change the feathering as well from linear to exponential uh, S curve to a cosine S curve. That's you only if you see that if you're going in really close. And you can also invert this effect. So I, if I did that, I would see work the other way around, which you can invert with the um, the new mask, by the way, as well. So this does both. You can also the new mask as well lets you see it as a mask or create a mask. And you can do this here by turning off these here. So turning the RGB on and turning the A, which is alpha, which is transparency off. And there you are. You've effectively got a mask. And you can you can just do a uh, emerge visible off that if to get a grayscale layer and so on, which you can convert to masks. So what I can do with this now, let's say I've selected that, is I'm going to put on a, what was it, an HSL again, drag that onto that top layer here and I can then 
play around before so again turn up the saturation of this I can see what I'm doing here and maybe play around with the luminosity a little bit make it a little bit lighter turn on the bottom layer so I can see this yeah, maybe that was too much luminosity and I can play with this as I like to just brighten that up to whatever I want it to be if I want to put a mask on to get rid of the other areas I can easily do that as well so I'll just go to that top layer there put on ordinary mask and then if I paint on that is this going to work yeah there we go so I can paint away the other areas that were affected a little bit uh, or I can even turn down the effect a little bit in here so there we go the two different methods uh, you need to download these if you're going to use them. There's, um, go to the download page and it'll tell you all about the other ones as well, which I have covered in a previous video. Anyway, that's it and thank you very much for watching.